Okay, I'm gonna apologize ahead of time because I realized like 2:30 I had a presentation today. <laughs> um, but I'm doing mine over the barber pole worm. Um, I raise goats, so this is an everyday health management thing we go through. It, the scientific name is Hemonchus contoris. I like that a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so basically, the life cycle is right here. Um, the larvae get picked up by the goat, and then um, the larvae embed in the abomasum. And then they go through two stages of, of a cycle where um, they basically shed or whatever. And that's when they become the adult, and only the adults um, lay eggs. So then the eggs are dropped out in feces, and then the eggs hatch in the grass and go through two more stages of larva, mm -hmm. and basically the cycle just keeps going over and over and over. So the goat actually ingests the worm then? I mean, it's a yeah. full worm, the, not the Yeah, the larva. <coughs> yeah. Um, so the barber pole worm gets its name um, from the female. The female <laughs> um, barber pole worm is red and white, and you can kind of see where it's wow. like striped like a barber pole. Um, also, the... Um, Adults can lay up to 5,000 to 10,000 eggs each time. So you get a huge population of eggs and larvae in your grass or pastures. Um, also during winter months, um, the adults can go through a, an arrested development phase where basically they're just um, embedded in the abomasum and they just wait until the harsh winter is over. And then once the harsh winter is over, they start laying eggs again. So you're, they're just using your animal as a storage mm -hmm. unit. <laughs> now before you go on, of course people maybe you don't know, but goats are ruminants, right? Yeah. And they have four compartments. Which of the four is the apple mason? Anybody know? I mean, is it the first one? It's the last one? Yeah, that's what, that's what would be your true stomach. Very good. That's the other word I was looking for. The apple mason in ruminants is close to your stomach. Yeah. So, okay, it's the last thing before the large, the small intestine start. Oops. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so some symptoms. Um, basically because the barber pole worm is blood sucking, it causes anemia. So, um, which, when you catch your animal at anemia, it's basically going to die. Um, mm -hmm. which this um, can cause the bottle jaw, so it's basically the swelling of um, the jaw, um, which can be confused as um, a gorder sometimes, but um, this is very prominent, um, and at this point, you should drench your animal um, pretty much excessively. <laughs> um, so we use a system called Fomancha, and it's where you pull down the lower eyelid of your animal and you judge the color of it by these. Hmm. You want bright red. That means your animal is healthy. It has a low to very low <coughs> worm count. If um, your animal is pale pink to almost white, your goat is very anemic. Um, you need to drench your goat with dewormer and probably also some sort of a uh, a uh, red cell or whatever it's called that they use for horses. Okay, maybe somebody might out here might not know what you mean by drenching. Um, drenching is uh, the, like basically the way that you uh, get your dewormer. Um, you, and, yeah. yeah, you can kind of see this, this specimen right here is what you would use to drench. Um, it basically is a like you stick it way back in the back of their throat and you just give it orally. Mm -hmm. So it's oral administration. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I wonder where they got the word drenching, because not everybody would know what drenching is. Yeah. Um, another way you can find out uh, your worm load is through a fecal egg count. Um, basically, you would just um, collect the fecal matter of your animal. Um, you can send it to a lab or your vet, or you can also do it yourself. So you would basically just count the barber pole egg uh, count in your animal species. Now what kind of instrument would you need for that? Um, you would need a microscope. Okay. Yep. Okay, and then treatments. Um, so this is a dewormer that you can get from like Tractor Supply or Schlin or uh, Rural King or something. 
Um, we don't really use this just because we have 20 <coughs> plus head of goats and it doesn't really, sometimes it's not a, that effective because um, they don't eat the correct amount. So basically that can cause um, your resistance in your medication. Um, this is a list of the dewormers. Um, as you can see, there's not very many that are actually approved for um, use in goats, um, but that doesn't hold back from people using these in goats. Um, and basically your dosage is, uh, is um, calculated by the weight of your animal. Now, why are they not approved? Is it because you know the approval process is expensive? Do they the companies figure I'm not going to go through it because I'm not going to sell that much? Or I, I toxic? I honestly have okay. no idea. Okay. Um, they talked about in our class last semester, the sheep production class. It's like those people can't make money off of this. So they don't right. put the money into it. Okay, that's that's probably what happens. The company goes, we're not going to go through the procedures to get approved for goats because we're not going to sell enough. To make it worthwhile. Approved in like Australia, New Zealand. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, like so it's not like they're bad for goats, but they're not approved for goats. Let's yeah. That way. Yes. Um, so a lot of times when people bring new animals to their farm, they just throw it out in their herd, and um, that's a good way to bring in a good infestation of worms. Um, you should really hold your animals um, up to 30 days in isolation or dry lot. Um, that a Without the grass, basically, your the worms are able to go through their life cycle. Um, a, a few years ago, rotating pastures was thought to um, to prevent the uh, the spread of worms, but um, a lot of times people don't um, rest their pastures for more than seventy days, and that's what is needed to um, make sure that the the larvae that are in the grass do not survive. Um, and then also, um, because I'm specifically talking about goats, goats are browsers, so um, they, they don't, they're not restricted to grazing like sheep. Sheep are strictly grazers. So um, if you were to let your goats roam in a very uh, wooded or um, like the woods of, or whatever, um, they're, they're less likely to be infested um, with these barber pole worms. Um, that's just because the larvae live in the grass. But, yeah, that's it. Questions? Now, I, I can't remember, do you have dairy goats or meat goats? Or yeah, what? I raise four goats. And that's meat? Yeah. That's meat type of goats, okay. Yes, anybody have any questions? You don't, I, did I ask you before if you had any baby goats you could bring in? I can't remember. Or they're not close? I can't uh, no, we, we uh, kid in late okay. December. Early okay, January. okay, so they're all, they're all too big. Okay, yeah. yeah. If you've never interacted with a goat, try to because they are the cutest things ever. They're funny. They're, they're so funny. Nice. In that room back there, one time I had three baby goats. <laughs> it was incredible. They were just going all over, prancing. She brought them in in uh, cat carriers. <laughs> One was two weeks old. <laughs> so cute. Okay.